G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, a while back you would have seen a couple of videos where I built up this home brew Sterling engine and uh, after trial and tribulation I got it going and it runs really good. Now when you saw it before, you would have seen it running with uh, none of this cooling on there, none of these cooling fins, and then you would have seen it with just the top cooling fin. Well now I've added cooling fins each side. This was all one big heat sink and I just cut it down and put it on. And it, the, the reason being that sure it runs but after about 10 minutes it overheats and it just loses um, the heat differential enough that it slows down and then it finally stops. So I put these extra coolers on the side and uh, that helped. I mean it really is only an issue in warm weather. In the cold weather it, it goes for ages, you know, because the heat is taken away. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this off, undo this, now this is stainless steel, it's got an aluminium piston inside, displacer, this is brass and originally I had, I had too much heat transfer, oh well, yeah I had heat transfer and I've still got heat transfer between this heat uh, hot part of the engine and the supposedly cool part and I've got a ceiling ring in there, originally had a neoprene ring but that didn't last, I mean too much heat so then I used, I made up an aluminium one as a sealer purely because I had difficulty trying to get a, a asbestos or an exhaust gasket one in there to make one up and it was going to be tricky so I just put an aluminium one in there as a, as a sealer and it did the job but of course aluminium transmits heat better than <laughs> just about anything. So I was banging the heat from this into the brass. Today's little project I'm going to take this off and see if I can make up a, 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 a proper heat resisting gasket which will keep all the heat up this end of the motor. As it is it runs for about, in warm weather it runs for about, well, I'll use about two thirds of the pot of methods, so it runs for quite a long time, but uh, I mean I want it to keep running continually, you know, regardless. And if you're going to do a job, we well, might as well keep at it until you get exactly how you want it. But overall, she's a she's a pretty cool unit, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was a fantastic project, and I'm really pleased with the way it turned out, considering there were no plans whatsoever. And uh, yeah, Craig Root in, in uh, Oklahoma gave me some advice, helped me out quite a bit, and. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, put, we'll take it apart and see what happens. These little Allen headed bolts I got from Banggood are perfect for these sort of jobs, you know. They're really the ideal thing for model making. It's, uh, you're less likely to mark them being Allen headed bolts than if you had, say, slotted screws. So, yeah, it's. Uh, Pretty good way to go, really. They're pretty cheap and beautifully made. Anyway, I'll come back when I've got it all apart. Could take a little while. Okay, so I've marked the two bolt up sections with marker pen so we know which way to put them back so the holes all line up. And this comes off. There's the displacer. And uh, got a Vegemite jar there to put our nuts and bolts in. And we'll see how that does its thing. That's solid aluminium. So, what I need to do is on this, this aluminium seal in here, I've got to replace that with some gasket heat proof gasket material. 
Right, well I've been through my gaskets and rather than you start off from scratch with just playing gasket sheet, I've got a, a couple of these exhaust manifolds off of stationary engine and I could actually make one of these fit because that is just slightly larger. So I've got a machine the aluminium back to allow for the thickness so I can go back say and just a skim, just how it locates itself. And all I've got to do then is trim off the outside. Basically, just bring this around. It's not going to matter if it's uh, not exactly the same size or the thickness all the way through. That should do the job. And that way, I don't have to do very much work at all, really. And I'll seal this in place with some more um, gasket cement on this side so that I can pull it up and still separate it later if I need to. So the first thing to do is machine up this aluminium locator um, so this will just drop onto it enough that it's just a little bit less than the thickness of the of the gasket. So we're not going to have to take much off at all really. Hmm. Once we've done that then we'll just trim it and we can put it all back together again. And this should be enough insulation to um, stop the heat transfer I'm expecting. I could even go down more and use both of these. Hmm. Well, I think one would be enough because we're not talking about a lot of heat here. Okay, we'll, we'll do it. Oh, that's good. That's perfecto. So now all we have to do is shape the uh, the gasket. What have we got there? to do any grinding. I don't really want to grind this sort of material. There could be some nasties floating around. So now that should just drop on. So when it's in place you won't really see much of the daggy bits.
Alright, I will let that set a bit. A little bit of weight on it. And we'll keep everything flat. And then we'll put it together and get it going. Now you notice that I used the square end, not the ball end. The ball end on these is just for running up the, the bolts. It's not strong enough to tighten them with, so you know I've seen people snap those off and then whinge about how they broke their their uh, their key. Well they're not meant for tightening, they're only meant for just running up stuff. So we're all back together. It actually looks good. You can't see the gasket really. Everything came up pretty good. Now it's just a matter of clean off the, the marker. Give it a go. You can use it straight away with that stuff. That's what you use to seal two stroke crankcases with. But I use it for all sorts of stuff. But, uh, yeah, so that should now with the, that and the cooling. We should run for a very long time. I might have to lengthen the stroke. It might be alright as it is. Because everything came on very close to, to spec. I don't think I'll have to even adjust it. We'll give it a go anyway. Let's see what happens. I'll take that off first. Get that bit of acetone does the job. All done. No problem. I might lengthen that stroke on the displacer just a tiny bit later on, but anyway, it shouldn't make a big difference as far as run time, so now it's a matter of whether or not this is going to get as hot, all this stuff, but I doubt it.
Well, there you go, guys. Mission complete, which just shows you the sort of stuff I get up to in my workshop. I mean, you can always improve projects, and uh, yeah, have a go and make one of these. It's pretty simple, and uh, it'll test out your machining skills and see, you know, if you're any good. But that's it for me, that's it for now, and uh, yeah, have a good one. See you next time. Cheers.